Good morning, Carl Gutico. It is seven, eight, five past eight on um, whatever day it is. I don't actually know what day it is. There's Fujisan out there looking magnificent. That's the view that I'm getting from him. He's so clear and magnificent this morning, so I can't wait to go out. I'm here having my traditional Japanese breakfast. It's absolutely stunning. So soup, rice, some pickled vegetable here. Got, I think some fruit there, noodle, egg, and fish. Some extra seaweed if I want it. 2468, I'm not waiting any longer. Good morning, Kawaguchiko. And what a way to wake up. It is quarter to nine, 10 to nine, five to nine. Fuji Sun is looking especially spectacular today. The air is much clearer than it has been. He's looking very sharp and crisp. And it's so much easier to see him than it has been. It's certainly easier to photograph him than it has been. What a way to start the day. So I'm going to do some cycling today and just basically be at one with nature and feeling very peaceful and very contented. It's such a wonderful place. It was a nice way to spend my birthday yesterday. The birthday was largely inconsequential. I would have done what I did yesterday anyway, but Nonetheless, it was a nice way to spend the day. Just very quiet, contemplative, talking to butterflies. I feel like a real hippie. So I decided to forego the bus and take this. What could possibly go wrong? Already you can see some cloud and some haze approaching Mount Fuji. And that wasn't there as recently as half an hour ago, I suppose. It wasn't even there. The conditions up there change so quickly, which is something that they warn you about if you're going hiking. And it's so obvious when you stand back this far from it and, and look at what's going on up there, you can see why it would be so potentially treacherous. I think it's much nicer to just look at it from back here. When he's right there, like that, and he's so clear, so crisp, you can see every bump and dip and rock. It, it looks like he looks so close that you could touch him, but he's not. And it's hard not to just stand there in awe, contemplative awe at this giant, giant beast of a mountain. So big, you think of what caused it to be there, and you think of what caused the top of it to be knocked off, and all the knock-on effects that that had in this area over time and it's also violent but then you sort of look at him like this and think it's almost like it can't be true one doesn't equate with the other So I just had the most wonderful conversation with that man who just stopped me right here while I was trying to take photos of the Sakura to ask me where I was from and what I was doing here and if we had cherry blossom. He only had fairly basic English, but it was certainly more than I have Japanese. And we were able to have a, a, a decent conversation about what I love about Japan and where I've been and what I've seen. And he made sure that I felt welcome to come back when Tokyo hosted the Olympics in two years time. And it was amazing, it was amazing. He just wanted to say hello and to thank me for coming. He thanked me for going to Hiroshima and Nagasaki and seeing the atomic bomb stuff. He asked me about music, he asked me what music I like. He also is a fan of jazz, all sorts of music, so we were kindred spirits there. He asked me if I'd been to Shibuya. I rolled up this and showed him my Tower, Tower Records t-shirt that I bought in Tower Records in Shibuya. He told me about the shrine in Asakusa and I told him I'd been, so he called me a Japanese connoisseur. <laughs> he even said I could speak Japanese well. I'm like, mm, yeah, dame. <laughs> oh dear, that was amazing. I am so glad that I've gotten in early with the pics and that I've jumped on that mad thing to come down and cruise around the side of the lake again to get some pictures while I can still see him because I suspect he might be under cover of cloud and haze and whatnot again this afternoon. It is just so gorgeous down here by the lake. It's so calm, it's so serene. There's a few guys fishing. There aren't too many tourists out today, which is nice. There's still some sakura in bloom, which is gorgeous. And just generally, it's stunning. It is absolutely stunning. Check out all the sakura still on this tree. This is one of the thickest blooms I've seen since I came to Japan. Even in Kyoto, I don't remember seeing a tree that had that much sakura in bloom. It's incredible.
changing up the food thing today and as I'm riding around in the sun, I really want that view in the back, but there's no sun on my face. Okay, so changing it up a bit today with the food stuff because I'm riding around in the sun, not that it's hot, in the sun. Here's Fuji, by the way, I'm staring at Fuji as I say this. Staring at Fuji as I speak these words. As I'm riding around in the sun, I'm gonna try some cold things. Probably gonna get a massive sugar overload from this, but whatever. So there's four things here, and I got them because I don't know what they are. First thing we're gonna look at is Lottie Sweets Square, and it claims to be a fruits cake and ice. Fruits, cake, and ice. I wonder if it's gonna look like that. Beautifully packaged as ever. This is a lovely, oh. It's, it's a bit like the product versus pack shot thing on the, on the checkout. It looks like that on the pack. In reality, it looks like this. However, it doesn't really matter what it looks like, it's what it tastes like that counts. And really, what it actually tastes like is just another one of those things that I've had about six variations on already. They call it bread, they call it pancake, they call it all sorts of things. Essentially, it's just sweet bread with vanilla ice cream and some hint of berries of some sort, but it's not a huge quantity of berries, it must be said. It's nice. As with a lot of sweet things here, it's sweet without being overly sweet. Mm. I'd probably have another one, I suppose, at some point. I wouldn't rush back for it. Hmm, kind of nice. Sweet square, fruits, cake, and ice. You really can't beat anything that has vanilla ice cream. This one, well, they're getting a bit soft, I'm gonna have to rush. This one, I have absolutely no idea about. It looks like it's got some white stuff wrapped around some beans or berries or something. Maybe another red bean thing, don't know. Let's just have a look and see what's in here. Ooh, it's on a stick. It looks like that. It's on a stick, it's that big, it's quite big, okay? Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's vanilla ice cream with red beans in the middle. Mmm, 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 mmm. This whole red bean thing over here, it's sort of, it's an acquired taste. They're kind of sweet, but when you get into them, they kind of taste like Mexican beans. They kind of taste like the aftertaste of baked beans. I suppose they're all the same sort of thing, really, aren't they? These ones are slightly sweet to start with, but then they don't stay sweet, which is interesting. Drippy. Just a very, very basic vanilla ice cream at the bottom. Without much flavor, to be honest. Mm, that was all right, I suppose. Sugary treat number three, it looks like this. Again, I haven't done a translate, so I have literally no idea what this is. This is probably where my sugar levels go into apoplexy and I develop type two diabetes on the spot because this is a massive overload of sugar. Whatever, you only live once, right? Ah, now I've had one of these before. So when it comes out, it looks a little bit like a waffle. I think it might, if we do it the right way. Oh, mm, not really. Okay, so this appears to be, oh, now a piece fell out. Let's investigate that. No, let's not. This appears to be the biscuit on the outside, cone sort of biscuit, whatever you call that stuff, with ice cream in the middle and a thin wedge of chocolate down the center, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what it is. The waffle, cone, ice cream, and a very thin layer of chocolate right down the middle. Oh, fuck me. It's a ducky mass. I'm certainly very thankful for this. This is really yummy. The ice cream's nice, it's not overly sweet. Mmm, mmm, it's, mm. it's dark chocolate. And I don't normally like dark chocolate, but in this context, it's really nice. Mmm, mmm, it's really yummy. Mmm, I'll definitely be ready to finish by the time I get through this. I will absolutely not want any more. Oh, no, this is interesting. On the bottom of the waffle cone, you can see there, you dig some ice cream out and we'll have a better look. Actually, I've just made it harder to see, but on the inside of that waffle cone along the bottom, only along, oh no, along both edges, I think there is a layer. I think there is also a layer of chocolate inside of the cone. See there? So there's the cone, and there's a layer of chocolate along the inside, and there's vanilla ice cream, and then there's a slice of dark chocolate right down the center. Wow. Mmm, mmm. That's where the chocolate flavor is really coming from. It's on the inside here, the inside here, and right down the middle. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Mmm, good morning. <laughs> doesn't say much, doesn't it? They're very quiet, these things. A vlog, yes. Yeah, yeah. Every day or? Yeah, I try to do it every day. Okay. About, oh, excuse me, I do it about places that I've been and what I've seen, the mountain primarily at this point. Every other day, I go to a convenience store and I get some really Japanese looking stuff. 
I investigate and I show what I'm eating and... Decent deficit. No. Just little flowers hanging from a tree. You have to wonder why they're so special, but they are. Um, oh, very much so. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Boring. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I so see you know a bit about it. Have you been? Yeah. You've seen more of my country than I have. Uh, most of time. Yes, we all say that. <laughs> oh, my, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are from Australia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from Sydney. Met a couple and a bit, a big, a bit, a bit, a bit off of school. Big, 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 big. But, but yeah. Exactly. We. Yeah. 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 Very bad Japanese. If there's only one thing I can learn before I come here, it is to say "Watashi no Nihongo wa warui des," means "Watashi no my Nihongo wa Japanese warui des is very bad." <laughs> I worked on that for weeks just to make sure I got the yeah. pronunciation right. What a view. If only I didn't have to turn off here. I'm gonna keep riding until I get right up to the top. But here I am, riding a bicycle along one of the main roads of Kawaguchiko. And there's Fuji, Fuji-san. Just cruising along in the background. Each time I look out and there's not a six-story block of apartments to block my view. There he is. This is absolutely magical. I've cycled over to the other end of town. I'm on the other side of the railway line. Every time you move here, it just feels like you get closer to uh, Fujisan. These pictures, these images don't do the immense size of it justice. You just don't get a sense of how big it is on the screen in the same way that you do when you're looking at it. It um, is and never ceases to be quite magical and quite incredible. Thank you.